What is up, everybody? It is Alex from Heavy New York calling from the quarantine zone again. And this time we are here with Troll Fest. Thank you so much uh, for chatting with us on the go. Hey, dude. Uh, it's my pleasure. Yo, where are you at right now? You in Norway? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, uh, I'm uh, walking around in uh, Oslo. Uh, I'm on my way to meet uh, uh, Fabian, our guitar player, and uh, we're going to hook up uh, at our rehearsal space to uh, hang out and have some fun. Oh, that's how you do it in Norway. Indeed it is. <laughs> yep. But it's ex thank you for giving us some new music uh, to, you know, hold over this time in this godforsaken per pandemic. We have the Happy Heroes EP coming out. <laughs> Was this meant to kind of just, does this That's have right. any relationship to Norwegian Fairy Tales, the last album? Or is this kind of like a, maybe a standout thing to hold people over? Uh, it's, uh, it's pretty much a straight up uh, standout thing. Uh, like, uh. Uh, part of the reason why we, uh, part of the reason why we wanted to do the uh, cover songs on the EP, was basically because of the uh, track "Happy Heroes," which we all really loved. Uh, but we, we didn't. Well, it didn't fit with the Norwegian fairy tales uh, so, uh, theme, and it didn't fit with the, uh, with uh, what's going to be the theme for the next album. Uh, so we basically found out that if we wanted to release it, it would have to be like an EP format. Uh, just because uh, either that or a single. But we've been wanting to do some more covers for quite some time too. So uh, yeah, it's, uh, it was a match made in heaven. <laughs> definitely, definitely. And being that your music is always super fun to listen to and always just like upbeat, like did you almost have to like pick a set of cover songs to almost suit the style of Trollfest, or were you just kind of like picking things randomly that you just you didn't that you didn't even think about that? Uh, we pretty much. I mean, uh, the main criteria for uh, for the cover songs was. Uh, uh, <laughs> If, if uh, any of us could make a song that worked uh, and that we liked, then uh, that was pretty much it. So it's, uh, yeah, uh, all the three songs that we've covered are basically the love child of uh, uh, one or another of us. So like we each did, or three of us did one cover song each. Uh, and, uh, yeah, I, I mean, uh, the whole selection process was just uh, pretty much just, uh, you know, uh, uh, pick a song you really, really like. And if it can be made into Trollfest, then uh, let's do it. Mm -hmm. So being that like, because I feel like p for fans of Trollfest, if they like, you know, uh, Norwegian fairy tales, they'll appreciate hell of a, they'll appreciate Captain Chaos. They would appreciate like, is there kind of like a formula that Trollfest likes to stick with? Or has there always been maybe like a lot of experimentation in the songwriting process? Uh, I was about to say the, uh, the formula has been experimentation. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, it's, uh, no, it's, um like uh, all of us in the band are major music fans to uh, uh, like uh, outside of the band and we were along before we started the band and we probably will be long after the band dies mm -hmm. uh, and uh, yeah the, the, the main ethos behind writing Trollfest music has always been uh, write something that we really like you know uh, make, make, make the kind of music I would put on at a party or I would like to hear at a party. Uh, that's sort of the, uh, that has been the main goal pretty much since day one, I think, to, uh, to entertain ourselves and, and to, to make music that we, we really like. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, and people who want to say that heavy metal music is all about evil and darkness, Trollfest is usually one of the first bands that I recommend people to kind of prove them wrong. Uh, yeah. No, uh, it's, uh, yeah, yeah, uh, thank you for that. <laughs> mm -hmm. And, uh, uh, yeah, I concur, I agree. Uh, it's, uh, uh, I, I mean, I, I, I love my share of uh, black metal and death metal and all the, uh, the dark, evil-sounding stuff. All, all of that is fucking fantastic uh, when, when that's what you're in the mood for. But, yeah, I, I think 
like music is about emotions and there are a shitload of emotions not just hate or anger or or both uh to put it very very simply yeah and do you like has there ever been do you try to maybe use music because you know you go by like these aliases and troll fests you almost like go by these different names like has is there any relationship though in troll fest to your personal lives as all as as well or has troll fest always been an escape from who you personally are uh, uh again i'm tempted to say both uh it's uh it's certainly uh, in many ways, it's uh, it's a bit of an escape for us because you know, like uh, uh, we all have regular day jobs that we do most of the time, uh, and sort of uh, Trollfest is uh, you know uh, our project, our weekend project, our evening uh, shenanigans, uh, all of that stuff. Uh, and here I am in the rehearsal space. Say hello to uh, Espen and Fabian. How's it going, y'all? How's it going, Sean? Very, very good. Uh, got my beer, so you got the gear and you got so, the. We're social distancing. Yeah, but you got the gear and you got the beer. Everything's in check. Exactly. <laughs> it's gonna be a nice Tuesday. Yeah. But uh, do you almost feel that, like in Trollfest, that maybe you all, in a way, portray characters? sort of by going by these different you know like these pseudonyms or like do you feel that uh maybe a troll fest is like me you, you're it's you're not really portraying anybody different uh well it's uh, uh in a sense I, I i'm not sure if you can really uh like whenever you go on stage, the, there's a certain element of playing character. I think uh, it's uh, you know I, I, it's something I think everyone on stage do, whether or not they admit it. Uh, and uh, and and also you know like um, uh, oh, if you see someone on stage jumping around, uh, fucking with everybody and uh, screaming and just being balls out mad. That's cool on stage, but you can't be like that off stage, or uh, you can. But chances are you'll be locked up. <laughs> uh, so, uh, so in a sense, we're sort of taking, or in a sense, we're a little bit like playing out. Or, I guess the best way to say it is that we're we're doing caricatured versions of ourselves on stage. Like you know, we're um, uh amplifying some parts of ourselves and suppressing other parts of ourselves to uh you know to uh, make it uh, uh as entertaining as possible and also to have fun yeah and and you mentioned like the whole day job thing so you can't go into your day job as trollman then right can or have you uh <laughs> actually from time to time i have but uh, I, I work as a kindergarten assistant, so the kids find it funny when I uh, act uh, agitated and uh, angry. Hmm. So, but uh, yeah, on a on like on a normal uh, on a day to day level, uh, it's not really uh, feasible to be uh, Trollman. Yeah. Well, maybe uh, maybe you'll get the kids more excited about learning, or maybe you'll have them more focused. Uh, possibly possibly do you know how much better uh, i would have done in school if the guys from guar were my teachers like <laughs> yeah dude uh, uh same with me um uh, yeah so, some uh, some entertaining teachers would have probably uh, uh helped me become a ceo or something but then again i don't know if that's to be desired so <laughs> Yeah, to a degree. Uh, going to the vocal process, has there ever been a time? Do you consider Trollfest music to be rather conceptual? Like, do you ha like do you feel that maybe like lyrics or a story could influence the sound of the music as well, or have you always needed the music to come up with lyrics? Uh, for me, it's always been uh, lyrics to music rather than music to lyrics. Um, uh, just because. Uh, I don't. If for me, like there's, um, there's so much being said with music, without actually speaking words. You know, uh, uh, music is uh, 
uh, the language of the emotions and all of that stuff. So I, I think uh, like all all music inherently has a feel or an emotion or uh, uh, something along those lines. And I, for me, it's more um, uh, interesting to uh, sort of try to uh, find that thing uh, in the music rather than write some lyric and then ask someone or to put music to the lyric or put music to the lyric myself. It's, uh, I don't know, to me, I, I know there's a lot of people who work that way, uh, but to me, that sort of feels a bit backward. Yeah. Do you almost like need to be in just as much in like character or just as much in that like emotional state of mind when you're recording as when you're playing live? Or do you feel that like when you're recording in a studio, you know, everything is much more focused and you're just focused on the song itself? Uh, yeah, uh, the second one, uh, it's um, uh, like usually when we're in the studio, the uh, uh, first and foremost where uh, where we we try to make the music as cool as we possibly can uh, and you know obviously some parts you need uh, uh, in some parts you know it's it's uh, it's good to bring out the character to uh, to get that feel on it and to get that uh, notion on it but uh, yeah again as I said I, I feels a little bit exaggerated to call it characters because it's it, 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 it is like uh, uh, Trollman is a character caric, caricatured uh, I don't know Trollman is an extreme version of me so uh, it's pretty much you know like uh, uh, when I go on stage I amp up uh, uh, those parts uh, and I do a little bit of the same in the studio as well but in the studio I also find it slightly more um, um in the studio, I find it more uh, productive to uh, uh, to uh, you know just uh, go in primarily with your ears and and listen to uh, uh, to what has been done and what you're about to do and and just you know uh, find find the coolest sounding bits that you can produce, I suppose. Definitely, the music is very technically impressive too. So I'd imagine that like there has to be a lot of focused elements and a lot of seriousness demonstrated into the music, you know, to, to execute the albums the way they are. Uh dude, yeah, I, I'm playing with the uh, fucking fantastic musicians. There's no no doubt about that, except for Espen. Oh, 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 that hurts. <laughs> No, but yeah, I mean, uh, the dudes in my band are fucking impressive people. The, the shit they pull off is uh, uh, very, very cool, I think. Yeah, definitely, and a lot of your fans think as well. Do you look at every album in the Trollfest catalog as maybe, because, like, as, like, a self, for lack of better words, like a self-portrait of who you personally are at a particular time? Did I lose you? No, not really. Oh. I might do that when 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 we get older, uh, but uh, for for now, I, I I mostly see the the albums as uh, 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 different fairy tales and uh, obviously you know also epochs in the band and stuff like that. Uh, but like primarily, uh, or they they still uh, sort of um, uh, I still categorize them a little bit like uh, lyrically. Uh, so you know the, the as you know the Norwegian fairy tales being Norwegian fairy tales, uh, Heluva being about uh, spelunking and uh, subterranean exploration, uh, Captain Chaos being about time travel and invention, uh, that kind of stuff. So, yeah, that's uh, mostly for me how I uh, 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 how I organize the uh, the back catalog in my head. Mm -hmm. And do you like to leave the music open to interpretation, or do you try to engage the listener into the subject matter of each uh, album? Uh, we we try to engage people in the subject matter musically, uh, and uh, obviously lyrically as well. But uh, I'm also a very strong believer in uh, not over-explaining stuff. 
And I think particularly when it comes to music and lyrics and probably also, uh, you know, uh, poetry and, uh, and uh, books, novels and all kinds of writing is uh, I, I, I kind of don't really want to talk too much about what it is about to me because I'd much rather have people uh, read something personal for them into whatever it is that's been written, if you know what I mean. Definitely, definitely. Because I think like the music, what I love about this like style of music, whether you want to call it like a folk metal, I call you guys troll metal. That's just how I call troll fest. I call you guys straight troll metal. That's your genre. But like with folk metal, it I've noticed like listeners are very dedicated into like the culture and the background and the story of the album. But they also are very good at like making those stories representative of a personal experience that they've had. Yeah, uh, uh, that seems to be the thing that goes these days. Uh, I, I, I don't think, I, I feel like I can't even turn on the TV without, uh, like, uh, even the guys in the commercials have a personal story. Mm -hmm. uh, there, uh, if you know what I mean. There, there's, uh, uh, yeah, like, uh, I don't know if you watched the show Fool Us by Penn and Teller. No, uh, it's basically a show. It's basically a show about uh, magic and magicians. And even in that show, they have like a five-minute segment where everybody gets to come up with a personal story. And sometimes it's sometimes it's relevant. Sometimes it's inspiring. Sometimes it's uh, awe-inspiring. And then a lot of times it's just yeah, like uh, what was it? I. Uh, I saw one episode. Yeah, that wasn't fool us. That was something else. But uh, there was one guy who had a personal story about uh, losing half his family to cancer. Oh wow! Uh, which you obviously, I mean, that not cool at all. And then in the same episode, a couple of segments later, there was a lady who had struggled with self doubt. Mm -hmm. Which uh, I, I don't know, but to me those. I mean, everybody struggles with self-doubt. So, uh, uh, yeah, I, I don't know. Uh, uh, but there are, or, yeah, to get back to that, there are a couple of songs in Trollfest uh, that have, uh, like, a very personal meaning to me uh, because, of, uh, because of what I put into the lyrics or because of what I was going through when I wrote the lyrics. Uh, but uh, there are also a bunch of songs that are uh, that don't necessarily have like a deep personal resonance with me. Uh, they're, it's more made to uh, primarily and to to be cool music, if if you if you know what I mean. And like lyrically as well, that most of our lyrics are sort of uh, most of the albums are fairy tales. It's just the fairy tales that goes from the beginning of the album to the end of the album. Uh, and yeah, uh, that's usually what I use for, for lyrical inspiration, so to speak. So the final question is for the Happy Heroes EP, since we're getting covers, are we going to see maybe a side of Trollfest that we've never seen before? Mm, uh, uh, possibly. We have, we have attempted a couple of things on the EP that we've, uh, we've never done before. Uh... But I would say it's uh, it's more likely that you will hear uh, Aqua, Pharrell Williams, and Bobby McFerrin like you've never heard them before. And I'm excited to hear that. <laughs> so uh, before, uh, should be good fun. Yeah. So before we go, I want to thank you so much for your time for not only this great interview, but the trip through Oslo. I've interviewed so many bands from Norway. That I I feel like I I've like been there. You know what I mean? Like it's it's crazy. <laughs> so to get the tour. Yeah, and, yeah, yeah, yeah. And thank you for taking me in your rehearsal space. Um, for those of you wondering, the audio went out of sync sometimes. That's just the technical difficulties of these times that we're living in. But thank you so much. Is there just uh, anything else with Trollfest that you would like to promote? for the release of happy heroes oh yeah uh, check out our videos we uh, we have uh, on friday the third video for the ep is coming out and we're currently uh, working to re-upload the first video that came out uh and uh, yeah, yeah follow us on facebook check out our webpage 
maybe ah, check out our webpage. Definitely. Uh, all the news will be there. All all the funny bits will be there. Uh, so yeah. Yeah, and can we be expecting to hear uh, some new troll fest since uh, Norwegian Fairy Tales is two years old? Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, the the next album is actually halfway done, recording wise. Oh wow. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, all the all the songs have been written. All the lyrics have been written. Uh, drums, guitars, and saxophones are recorded. Uh, so we still have to record uh, vocals, bass, uh, synthesizers, and obviously the, all all the folk instruments. Yep, which there's a lot. So, but so, uh, it'll be worth the yeah. wait. So, but uh, if if uh, if all goes to plan, uh, the album will be out sometime around Christmas. Maybe a little bit before, maybe a little bit later. But uh, yeah, pandemic. Uh, fucking shite and uh, the world sucks so yeah uh, I guess we'll see well we would love to end this year with a troll fest Christmas so thank you but uh, I, I, I'll call I'll call you <laughs> Dude, we'll do our best to reference Seinfeld it'll be a troll festivus <laughs> but uh yeah 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 thank you so much everybody troll fest happy heroes heroes EP coming out this Friday this is Alex from heavy New York 